Hi, what's up? Mike here again with another video, and this one focuses on enhanced parts and visual style. And to do that, we're going to reproduce this part. And something that you'll notice about this part are the oblique planes on all the corners. And they are nearly impossible to create using the normal planes you start out with. But that comes later. Uh, starting out reproducing a part should always be finding out how big it is. And the way to do that is by measuring it. The distance tool is up here, if you don't have it, drop this arrow down and make sure distance is checked. You can also right click and find it here. So measuring the part, you can see that it is 1.5 inches wide, 1 inch deep, and an inch high. So going over here, we create a sketch. You go to rectangle, and something you may notice is that it gives you dimensions telling you how big the rectangle is before you put it down. So let's try to get the rectangle uh, the size we want before putting it down. So we can just get it. Mm -hmm. That's pretty close, but it's not exact, and we can do something about that. So on, if you go under the Tools tab, under Application Settings, this window pops up. It's a good idea to familiarize yourself with the application settings, as some of them are very useful. So, under the Sketch tab, you're going to see this display, and I'm going to check Minor Grid Lines, and down here, I'm going to check Snap to Grid. And now you see, the grid pops up. Uh, the, big, the big squares are an inch, and the small squares are an eighth. So, let's try drawing the rectangle again, back under Sketch. And you see it snaps to the grid, giving us the exact length we want without even having to add dimensions. So finish the sketch and extrude by one inch. And now it's time for the oblique planes. You can see from the original part that the edges meet at the bottom corner, as well as the top midpoints. So now would be a good time to introduce work planes. Work planes are basically surfaces that you use that are not included in the actual features of the part. Work planes have a lot of options down here, but the one we, we need right now is this one, a uh, plane between three points, because the three points we need are very easily distinguishable. So click that and find the points mentioned earlier, so the bottom corner and the two midpoints, and you see how it created the plane. Now we can use the plane to create a new sketch, just like that. And you'll notice that sketches here are a little different, I mean you can still draw on it, but uh, you'll notice that you can't see the line through the part. And that's why Inventor has this nice thing called Slice Graphics. If you right click, you can hit Slice Graphics or just hit F7, and so you see it kind of cuts away uh, the part uh, to the... Uh, your sketch. So now we can see what we're drawing, and we don't need to be really too precise here. So I'll just delete that and make a bigger triangle over this one. Finish the sketch and extrude that to cut it away. Cut the other way. Now we need the same thing on all the other corners. Now we could just repeat the process in just like we did, but I want to do it the easy way. And to do that, we're going to need more work planes. So drop down the work planes again, and we're going to use this one, mid plane between two parallel planes. So pick a plane here and a plane parallel to that, and it finds the middle. Do that again with the other side. And now I'll just go to mirror Pick a feature, pick the plane, mirror again, pick the feature, pick the plane, and then boom, done, too easy. And now that's all that needs to be done is cutting out this rectangle here. So I'm going to create a new sketch right on the middle plane that I just drew. Hit F7 to slice the graphics. and 
you'll notice since we're in the middle of the part that there's no geometry to reference. Well, that can be fixed. If I want to reference geometry, I can just project the geometry using this up here. So say I wanted to project this triangle, this triangle, and this triangle, and we see very nice and lovely geometry that we can reference. So back to the front view, I can pick up the midpoint here, and the midpoint here, change the sketch, extrude it away, cut it in both directions, go all the way, and now the part is done. So the other thing I wanted to mention is uh, how you look at stuff. So if you go under the View tab, you go under Visual Style, and it gives you a lot of options. So uh, for example, if you were to go to, say, Wireframe with Hidden Edges, it'll just give you just that, a wireframe with hidden edges. And you also have other options like, I don't know, Illustration. I don't know what you would use that for, but it's there. And those are only just a few examples. So hopefully you can use this stuff to increase your inventor awesomeness. I've been Mike, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>